Hello, everyone, and welcome to our tour of two important and useful tools for workforce boards and their staff, as well as anyone else who's working on the critical mission of ensuring that individuals with disability have full access to workforce services. Our presentation today is under the auspices of the LEAD Center, which is a WIOA policy development center of the Office of Disability Employment Policy and is led by Social Policy Research Associates in association with the National Disability Institute. Today we're going to tour a couple of different resources, web resources, and we'll take a closer look first at the DRIVE site, the most comprehensive disability employment site on the web, and we will also show you a brand new interactive data visualization tool on WIOA disability related reporting. Uh, I'm joined by some terrific tour guides today. Um, my name is Vince Kohler. Uh, I'm the Lead Center Co-Project Director at SPR. And for an overview of the work of the Lead Center, we'll first hear from Melissa Turner, the Director of Special Projects at DOL's Office of Disability Employment Policy. Then we'll hear from Rebecca Ceylon, Co-Project Director for the Lead Policy Development Center. And I'm also joined by two of my fabulous SPR colleagues, Laura Aaron, who is the lead project uh, manager, and by Joshua Mallet, our lead data pro programmer on the project. So to lead us off, I'm giving the floor to Melissa Turner, who will introduce ODEP and how the lead center relates to the overall ODEP mission. Melissa. Thank you, Vince, for that introduction and to the National Association of Workforce Boards for hosting today's virtual forum. I'm excited to be part of today's presentation. Just in case you're not familiar with the Office of Disability Employment Policy, or as we like to refer to ourselves, ODEP, we were established in 2001 and are part of the U.S. Department of Labor. We are the only non-regulatory federal agency that promotes policies and coordinates with employers and all levels of government to increase workplace access and success for people with disabilities. Our mission is to develop and implement policies that increase the number and quality of employment opportunities for people with disabilities. Historically, and unfortunately too often today, people with disabilities do not have the same opportunities for employment as their non-disabled peers. This is for a variety of complex reasons, but not because people with disabilities don't have the skills or desire to work. At ODEP, we work to bridge this gap. To advance this mission, we coordinate internally within the Department of Labor, for example, with the Veterans Employment and Training Service, the Employment and Training Administration, the Wage and Hour Division, and many others. We also have countless external partnerships, including with other federal agencies, state level agencies, non-for-profits, and employers and employer groups. And we are especially happy to include you at NOB in this group because we recognize the critical importance of the workforce development system in serving job seekers with disabilities and your role as workforce boards and governance at the state and local level. We also use grants and contracts to further advance our mission, including the contract that funds the LEAD Center, we appreciate our colleagues at Social Policy Research Associates and the National Disability Institute for their work to make the LEAD Center a success. The LEAD Center serves as ODEP's Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act Policy Development Center. In this role, the LEAD Center works to create sustainable systems change through capacity building and knowledge translation that brings to scale innovative practices to support WIOA implementation. LEAD does this by focusing on several strategic areas of national need, which include Section 188's non-discrimination and equal opportunity requirements and their application through WIOA, increasing employment of veterans with disabilities, and developing inclusive career pathways. The LEAD Center maintains key resources in each of these areas and other topics on its website, leadcenter.org. Finally, and most relevant to this presentation, the LEAD Center works on the data collection and performance reporting. Specifically, LEAD maintains the DRIVE Disability Employment site at drivedisabilityemployment.org. This website contains over 80 up-to-date disability employment data points from national and state level, as well as links to key state policies and state plans under WIOA. It's a wealth of resources and I encourage you to check it out. I also want to mention that DRIVE includes the WIOA data visualization tool that my colleagues will discuss in more detail. As you know, the WIOA 
signed into law in 2014 introduced several new data elements related to disability. We were curious about state progress in reporting on those data and worked with the LEAD Center to analyze the data in the hopes of answering a few key questions. What are states reporting? How much are they reporting? And what stories do these data tell about the ways that people with disabilities are served by the workforce system? ODEP is so excited to share this resource with the workforce system, and we hope you find the tool useful and informative as you advance your work on disability inclusion. Thank you, Melissa. Really appreciate that intro. And now for our tour of the drive site, I will turn it over to Rebecca. Rebecca Salon at NDI. Thank you, Vince. We're very excited to have this opportunity to share information with you that can inform the work of your workforce development board and the workforce systems that you oversee. So what questions related to serving people with disabilities might we want to be informed by data? For example, you may want to know who's served by your AJCs. How do your reported data compare to the statewide or national averages? How many participants are receiving services from other systems? And in what systems are they involved? Today, we will walk you through the LEAD Center's DRIVE website, which is a one-stop resource for workforce boards and staff. As noted earlier, DRIVE stands for Data and Resources to Inspire a Vision of Employment. The data and resources you'll find on the site were designed with people in the workforce system in mind, workforce development board members and staff, and others who work in the larger workforce system. As you will see in a moment when we walk through the site, this data can be useful to you in a variety of ways. Specifically, you can use the data and other information to track quality improvement, provide you with data you can use in reports. Also, board members and staff are often called upon to provide testimony or speak at public hearings or forums. And you might wanna have ready access to data for those purposes. You can benchmark your state against other states and the data and information can inform AJC certification in specific areas. You all likely have been involved in the AJC certification process at some level. One of the ways in which the data available on the drive site can be used by workforce development boards and staff is as part of the AJC certification process. As you know, state workforce development boards must establish objective criteria and procedures for the local workforce development boards to use in evaluating the effectiveness, physical and programmatic accessibility, and continuous improvement of AJCs and the AJC network. State workforce boards must review and update the criteria and procedures every two years in conjunction with their review and modification of their state plans. And the local workforce development boards must follow the state board's criteria and procedures to evaluate their one-stop centers and the one-stop delivery network at least once every three years. It's worth noting that local workforce development boards may opt to certify yearly or every two years and they are free to establish higher standards or additional criteria. As part of their assessment, the local workforce development boards must certify all comprehensive one-stop centers and affiliate one-stop centers within their local area for effectiveness, physical and programmatic accessibility and continuous improvement consistent with the statutory requirements set in the Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act. The certification process establishes a minimum level of quality and consistency of services in American job centers across the state. The certification criteria allow states to set standard expectations for customer focused seamless services from a network of employment, training and related services that help individuals overcome barriers to obtaining and maintaining employment. So as part of this process, how can workforce boards at the state and local level know if they're reaching people with barriers to employment and supporting them to achieve outcomes? We will now take you to the DRIVE website, which provides you with a broad array of data so that you can track and benchmark your progress 
and that includes a data visualization tool focused specifically on WIOA performance measures. We've provided live links to the DRIVE website and directly to the interactive WIOA reporting data visualization tool, which is also on the DRIVE website, both at drivedisabilityemployment.org. We will provide you with an overview of what is on the DRIVE website that you can use in your role with your Workforce Development Board and to track your progress in serving people with disabilities. The home page includes a national snapshot of data, featured resources, and veteran-specific resources. National data includes the number of people with disabilities nationally, the number of people with disabilities who are employed, labor force participation rates for people with and without disabilities, and so on. The numbers reflect the most recent data that is publicly available, as you can see, so that some is from 2018 and some from 2019. Before we leave the homepage, and as I demonstrated as I was moving my mouse, you can hover over your state and see a snapshot of some of the same data for your state. I'm now gonna click on the National Data tab. If you want more specific national data, you can go to this tab to find over 80 data points reflecting the last three years of publicly available data. This includes, and I'll go down a little so you can see a little more, population and census data, data from the Bureau of Labor Statistics, Social Security Administration outcomes, wagner Pizer outcomes, workforce development outcomes, vocational rehabilitation outcomes, outcomes from the Intellectual and Developmental Disability System, and wage and hour 14C certificate outcomes. And for each data point, there's a link to the source from which the data was pulled in case you need to cite it or want to examine additional data. All of this information is updated two to four times a year, depending on the information source. If you want to see the same data elements for your state, you can either go to the state profiles or click on your state on the state map. Here you'll get a snapshot of your state, plus there's information related to your state's vocational rehabilitation, rates and services. You can then go to the state data tab, which will give you the same 80 plus data points for the last three years of publicly available data with links to the sources. The state data also includes two elements that are not on the national data page. These are mental health and education outcomes. Aggregated national data for these two data sources is no longer available. So you can see how useful it would be to have a single website on which you can access such broad data about how your state's doing in relation to serving people with disabilities but there's much more. If you wanna know what your state's doing to support employment for people with disabilities, you can go to the Policies and Initiatives tab. Here you'll find policies, legislation, executive orders, partnerships, systems change funding, training and capacity building initiatives, enforcement actions, and Medicaid information all related to disability employment in your state, again, from publicly available sources and with live links that will take you to the source. This is a great way to learn about a wide variety of initiatives that are happening in your state across the many systems that support employment for people with disabilities. Under the WIOA profile tab, you can find a link 
over here on the right hand side to your full WIOA state plan and two profiles that highlight the elements in your state plan and your state plan modification that relate to services for people with disabilities. If you want to know what your state plan says about support to people with disabilities, you can click on the download WIOA profile document and download the entire profile of everything that is mentioned in your state plan. Or you can go to one of the tabs below. You can click on a single area to find out in that area what your state profile says. And this includes your state's participation in the Employment First State Leadership Mentoring Program, what your state plan may have noted related to customized employment, blending and braiding resources, disability employment initiative and disability resource coordinators, financial literacy and economic advancement, school to work transition, career pathways, apprenticeships, work incentives and benefits, employer and business engagement, data collection, section 511 related to the use of subminimum wage, the equal opportunity and non-discrimination sections of section 188, veterans employment, mental health, and return to work and stay at work. And at the bottom of this list, you'll also find the past WIOA profiles that may have been archived. So the one at the top is the most recent one related to your state plan modification. And the one at the bottom is related to your original WIOA state plan. So if you're interested in knowing how your state is working to support employment, career advancement, and career pathways for people with disabilities, this tab provides you with easy access to summary information without having to go through the entire full state plan. There are a few more features that we'd like to highlight. There's a tab called State Comparisons. State Comparisons enable you to compare up to three states in a given state data category. So, over here, you can choose three states. Alabama's already highlighted. I'm just going to randomly pick two other states here, and you have the list of all the states to choose from. And then you get to choose your data category. So it has here general, mental health outcomes, Wagner Pizer. I'm going to choose intellectual and developmental disabilities outcomes. And then you also get to choose the year that you want to focus on for your comparison. And I will choose 2017 and apply that. And what you can see is information that allows you to compare how your state is doing in terms of dollars spent to support employment for people with intellectual and developmental disabilities, number of people served, lots of different data elements that could be, could be useful. So again, if you want to benchmark your state or provide context from neighboring states for how they're doing, you can use the data state comparison tool. The provider transformation tab, which we'll go to next, provides resources to support improved employment outcomes for people with disabilities in areas like leadership, culture change within an organization, strategic planning, operation and infrastructure development, funding options, service planning, staffing for organizational change, and data collection and analysis. These are very useful resources that were developed with, with implementers in mind for use by people who are working in the workforce system. And on the homepage, as you may remember from where we started. On the home page, there are featured resources, including information related to veterans. At the top, here on the top right, 
there's something that says subscribe to updates. You can subscribe to get updates so that you'll be notified when information is updated for your state or in a specific area of interest. We encourage you all to subscribe and to stay up to date on what's happening in your state and in a particular area of interest for you. Lastly, there's an advanced search function that makes it easy to find resources and information. You can select the system or systems on which you want to focus, topics, states, and dates to narrow your search. So it gives you lots of options of things you can check off. It also allows you to search by dates. So as you can see, right now, there are 3,395 records that are posted on the DRIVE website. So as an example, if you're interested in learning about executive orders, that, that just narrowed the search to 74 records. If you want ones that involve the workforce development system, that brought it down to 16 records and say you're interested in cross-agency partnerships. So you'd be able to find the 12 examples of records in different states that have to do with workforce development executive orders that reference cross-agency partnerships if you were in fact crafting one and wanted to see what another state has done. So the DRIVE website provides a single place to access a broad array of, array of data and information. And there's still more. Laura Aaron and Joshua Mallett will show you another feature of the DRIVE website. Thank you so much, Rebecca, for that tour. I, for one, wished I had had a site like that available to me when I was working for a, a workforce board. So I really appreciate the resources here, this resource-rich environment. Um, we're now going to turn to the data visualization tool and to give us a tour of that site, um, we're going to turn to Laura Aaron and Josh Mallett. Uh, Laura is going to go first. So go ahead, Laura. We know that you are all interested in WIOA reporting. WIOA requires that locals and states report on 10 disability related data elements. So we've been investigating the state of disability related reporting to better understand the best practices and challenges states and locals face when collecting this information from participants and in providing informed services to people with disabilities. The first step is taking a look at your own data. Often those in the field do not know what their data looks like and how comprehensive their reporting is. So we built an interactive data visualization tool to assist you in better understanding who you are serving. Let's take a look. Joshua. Hello everyone. Thank you, Laura. Using the WIOA reporting data visualization tool allows you to explore these disability related reporting for WIOA Wagner Pizer and Jobs for Veterans State grants participants. The purpose of the tool is to help you investigate the rates at which you're reporting disability related data elements. This will enable you to better understand who you're serving going forward so that your programs can better connect with and serve people with disabilities. By choosing the various tabs available here, data by map, data by tables, and data guide, you can explore disability related data elements by state, county, and ETA region. The data by map tab has various sub tabs to explore all the data elements in a variety of ways. For accessibility, users can explore the data by tables tab to access everything shown graphically in the data by map sub tabs via data tables with counts and percentages. Finally, the data guide tab provides a complete description of the 10 disability related data elements that programs are required to document with definitions and summarized descriptions. The current tab we're on within data by map, which is the disability status tab, describes the country and territories at the state and ETA region level. 
Here, we see that 5.2% of WIOA, Wagner Pizer, and JVSG participants nationwide indicated that they have a disability. The legend to the right of the map shows us that some states reported as high as 18.2% of participants indicated that they have a disability, while some states reported as low as 2.1% of participants indicating they have a disability. Note that the yellow shading indicates higher rates of reporting, and the purple shading indicates lower rates of reporting. If you're interested in knowing more about the rates for a specific state and its counties, you can select the state search bar on the left side of the map and type in the name of the state or the state's abbreviation. So let's start by asking a basic question. How many individuals receiving WIOA, Wagner Pizer, JVSG services indicated having a disability in say, the state of Michigan? When we type in the state of Michigan into the search bar, a state-specific map pops up below the map of the United States with drilled down details specific to Michigan. Overall, we see that Michigan reports 3.6% of WIOA, WP, JVSG participants indicating having a disability. Below the state map, we can see a single county, Eaton, reporting a significantly higher rate of participants indicating they have a disability than other counties at 13%. Users can explore this type of information for all 50 states if they're so inclined. Understanding the rates at which reporting participants indicating having a disability is enormously helpful. However, if we want to dig deeper into potential challenges that some states face in reporting these data, then selecting disability status unknown on the left side panel may help paint us a broader picture. So I'm just going to scroll up here and click disability status unknown. The overall map of the United States is updated now to reflect that 11.5% of WIOA, WP, JVSG participants disability status is unknown. As before, the yellow shading indicates higher rates of reporting, and the purple shading indicates lower rates of reporting. But what stands out here? We see that there are a few states that are all shown in shades of purple, reflecting rates up to 38% where disability status is unknown. Let's move on to yet another map example, but this time let's explore the other nine disability-related data elements. Let's select new under WIOA, like before, on the left side of the map, we still have a search bar to explore rates of reporting at the state and county level. But now we also have the opportunity to select a variety of different data elements beyond just participants' disability status. It's important to note that all of the additional data elements here are reporting rates only for those participants who have, indicating, who have indicated they have a disability. So when you first get to this tab, any category of disability indicated is already selected, and you'll see reporting rates for category of disability. Maps here graphically show the percentages of participants who indicated as few as one or as many as seven types of disabilities they identify as having, such as, for example, a physical or chronic health condition or a mental or psychiatric disability. As shown above the map, 26.3% of WIOA, WP, JVSG participants nationwide indicated their category of disability. Several states with large numbers of participants with disabilities did have high rates of participants indicating their type of disability, such as Colorado, which had rates as high as 62.8%, and Pennsylvania, with a rate of 78.4%, which you can see are shown in the brighter shades of yellow and orange on the map displayed. Let's choose a different data element, such as any work settings which indicates whether participants are working in competitive integrated employment, were formally employed in supported employment, are working in group supported employment, are working in a sheltered workshop, or 
are working in two or more of these settings. So just like on the previous tab, the map of the United States has refreshed to show us rates specifically for this data element. Above the map again, we see that in this case, 1.2% of WIOA WP JVSG participants nationwide who indicated they have a disability report they work in at least one of these types of work settings. Again, yellow shading indicates higher rates of reporting and purple shading indicates lower rates of reporting. Therefore, we know, for example, that the state of Minnesota, which is shown in yellow here on the map, reports close to 15% of participants working in at least one of these types of work settings. Just like on the previous disability status tab, we can explore states further. I'm going to type in Minnesota in the search bar using the state abbreviation. We can see here that there are several counties that are reporting particularly high rates of up to 60% of working in any of these work settings. If we scroll up again, we, let's, let's choose one more data element, such as individualized education program, for example, which indicates whether participants currently have or formerly had an individualized education program while attending secondary school. Overall, 1.3% of participants indicated having or having formally had an individualized education program. There's also the state comparison tab, which summarizes data elements not indicated or left blank of the country and territories at the state and region level comparing states. This tab specifically helps to identify states that have more or less comprehensive reporting of these data elements with other states. Finally, let's look at disability reporting across these workforce programs. You can also explore disability status rates for WIOA adult, dislocated worker, and youth, and Wagner Pizer jobs for veteran state grants programs. What's particularly informative about this display of disability status rates is not only can users see overall rates summarized by program, but users also have the opportunity to explore more closely the programs of particular interest to them. As we see from the start, four maps are shown displaying rates of participants indicating they have a disability where each map represents a workforce program. But perhaps we're only interested in viewing dislocated worker and Wagner Pizer Jobs for Veteran State Grants program maps. By simply clicking the checkboxes in the left filter view by panel, we can remove the adult and youth programs to only display the two maps of interest. For example, now we see in a moment that South Dakota has higher rates of participants who indicated having a disability in the Dislocated Workers program than in the Wagner Pizer Jobs for Veteran State Grants programs. If users are only interested in dialing down to just one program, then we could, for example, deselect the Wagner Pizer and JVSG checkbox and view only the Dislocated Workers map. Let's take a look at the specific numbers. Large percentages of adults and dislocated workers at 23 and 24 percent did not indicate their disability status. Their status is unknown. We do not know whether they have a disability. If we had more information, we might better serve people with disabilities within our own programs and by leveraging other programs. Interestingly, you can see nearly all youth at 95% reported their disability status. As you look at the table here, please note that participant counts may overlap as some participants may be co-enrolled in more than one program. As we wrap up our presentation, we invite you to explore your data online on the DRIVE website 
and use it to benchmark your efforts on the ground. If you find that your WIOA reporting of disability-related data elements is not comprehensive, investigate what might be happening. Are participants being given the option to indicate their disability status? And what types of services they might be receiving if they do have a disability? Do enrollment forms contain questions about all 10 data elements? What are other reasons that you might have lower rates of reporting? Your data will help drive system improvements for people with disabilities. And please stay tuned for additional technical assistance in the near future, including webinars in September, a frequently asked questions document, and more. Thanks, Joshua and Laura, for your tour. And thanks to all of our tour guides, Rebecca and also our friends at ODEP, uh, led on by Melissa. As you can see, there's a lot on the Lead Center site, and the site gets updated continuously. There are a number of ways that you can keep informed about what is there. So first of all, I recommend you sign up for the Center newsletter, but you can also follow the Center on your favorite social media platform. If you'd like further information, you can email us at info at leadcenter.org. And for more information on ODEP, you can visit their website at www.dol.gov slash ODEP. And with that, we'd like to thank you for joining us on our tour. We hope to see you again at the LEAD Center or at a future webinar there. All the best and stay safe.